welcome back. I'm Sonia. Today my husband John is going to teach us how to make some really tasty guacamole, pico de gallo, and chips. And you are going to love it. It's like one, when I go to parties people are like, please, please get your husband to break the pico and the guac along with the chips. So I know you're going to love it. Make sure you share it with your friends. And if you love this video, make sure you give us a big thumbs up and think about subscribing to the channel. Okay, let's get on with it. Okay, let's get started. We're going to start with three ripe juicy tomatoes and one onion, one bunch of cilantro, and a jalapeno. You could, oh, also some cumin and some salt. And this is what you're gonna need to make our pico de gallo. Um, my husband wanted to mention that you could use the serrano. The jalapeno is the bigger one, and that's his preference for pico de gallo. The serrano is hotter, and so you wanna probably pick a jalapeno and just, must you just love the fire, <laughs> okay? So we're gonna get started um, by cutting up our tomatoes to begin with. I wanna let you guys know, my husband is a professional chef, so when you see his knife cutting skills, do not compare it to yours because uh, he would make us all feel bad. Uh, he's gonna start with just a small dice on the tomatoes. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna cut them up and get them ready for this pico. Uh, he also wanted to let you know that the quality of produce you use uh, could change the amount that you add. So like if your uh, you know, cilantro is extra pungent or not, or if the jalapeno is hot or not, when you make pico or salsa or anything like that, you're just gonna have to taste it. So these are guesstimations. These are what we use the day that we made it. But when you try it, you're just gonna have to use your taste buds and make a decision as if it tastes like what you want it to taste like. And I think we've all been to Mexican restaurants, had some pico, so you kind of have an idea of what you want to, to taste like. And here he goes with our onions, uh, cutting <laughs> the rest of us. That's what he's cutting it for us. And you just also wanna just cut it like his, um, both ways, just a small um, little chop. Um, and the onion needs to be slightly smaller than the tomato. You do need to pay attention to how big they are because it actually does make a difference when you add them all together as to how big each component is. Now, I wanna let you know that the membrane and the seeds are what add the heat to our pico. So if you are just like, I can't take the heat, you could take it out. Because we used the jalapeno and not the serrano, we actually this evening, and the day that we made this, we did go ahead and, and add all the seeds. Now, if you smell it, you're like, wow, that is super hot. I mean, when you cut open the jalapeno, you will know it. Then just don't add so much, or if you know, you don't. But I think you need a little bit of the heat, and also the white membrane part of the jalapeno, that's the part that's gonna also add the heat. And cilantro, as was like, well, if you don't like cilantro, then don't make pico. You're gonna need the cilantro. I know there's some cilantro haters out there. I don't know you or understand you because I love cilantro. My daughter thinks you can have cilantro as a salad in itself. She literally eats cilantro just with salt. And no, I'm not kidding. It's a little weird, but she said this when she was little. That's how much she loves it. So you want to make sure that you cut up the cilantro like my husband John and just do it extra fine because like I said, it is going to make a difference when you put it all together in your bowl and stir it around. So, uh, he wants to remind you that you cannot take things back out. So, he just started with, you know, some of our cilantro and then we're gonna just uh, stir it around here in a second and then try it. We're going to be starting with one teaspoon of cumin. And I know if you're not a cumin lover and you smell it, you're like, oh my God, that's so pungent. But let me tell you, when it's in your pico, you will love it. And you also need one teaspoon of salt and then he's just gonna mix it all together and blend it up and that's what you really need to do is just to get it all blended all together oh my gosh doesn't that look so good you guys there is so many things that you can do with pico we use some insider quesadillas with chips obviously 
with my Mexican rice. It's great on top of chalupas. Like you could even make it easier on yourself one night with like pulled chicken from the Costco rotisserie chicken, a little pico, cheese, yes. <laughs> so many things. You could add it to your ground beef, your lean beef, and just make it good. And the best way to decide if your pico is ready, well, is just to give it a try. Of course, he was like, okay, babe, give it a try. And of course I tried it and I was like, you know what? I think it still needs a little something. And that's really how we decide you know how much more to put and I was like I think it needed at that night I think it needed more of the cilantro so like he said you cannot take it back out you can always add it back in and I just gave it another little try and I was like yes that's good and I also added just a drop more salt so now we're gonna get going on the guacamole the key to good guacamole of course is good pico if you don't have good pico you're not gonna have good guacamole for some reason some people think that Guacamole is just avocados, and no, it's not. You have to add pico to your guac. He was like, I don't know if this one's gonna be good. And, oh, no it wasn't, because he said you can tell, and I just, I wanted to show this so you could know too, is when you're at the store and you can see the ends. Granted, we bought these in a big bag, so it was luck of the draw, and he'd cut through and he was like, no, the whole thing is bad. He did want to show you that you could take your knife to it, uh, to try to get the seed out. I don't know if I suggest it or not, just be very careful. <laughs> and so there he goes, he's on his next one, and he's like, okay, this one's gonna be good, and sure enough it was. It was like a weird with a, the new, like some of the newer breed ones, I think, um, have the newer, smaller bits, because you're supposed to get more of the avocado, or that's the theory. I can't remember if that was the ones from Trader Joe's. Sometimes we get those two with the little ones. Wanted to let you know to make it easier on yourself, so you don't have to um, if you can't get out with a spoon or you just want to ahead of time go ahead and start working the magic it's just take the knife and uh, score it across into like a little checkerboard pattern and then just scoop it out and that is a great way to get your avocado out just use the spoon make it easy on yourself I don't know how you do it but this is how I was taught I was brought up with pico and guac my mother used to make it at least probably once a week um, because I'm Hispanic, we just added a dinner. It was just like a normal side. Um, so yeah, and then he wanted to let you know, you could use anything to squish up your avocado, turn into guacamole, any of those things, a masher, a fork. You could even use your whisk if you really wanted to. And you want to make sure that you get in there and you really squish it down. You don't want big chunks. There's nothing like getting a huge chunk of avocado it's not mixed properly <laughs> with your guacamole when you're eating it with your chips. And we use limes in our guacamole. I know there's a few people out there that think lemons, but we think limes. We are in team lime. Let me know what you like in yours. And then, of course, you just add in your pico de gallo. Um, you just have to, like, kind of guesstimate of how much you want to put. I would just say some. <laughs> Mix it around. And then, of course... We're gonna add some more salt. Um, okay, well, I don't think we added salt. So you're gonna add some salt and mix it around. And of course, just, I mean, you're cooking, it's guac, it's delicious. Just keep trying it. I mean, I think that's part of the thing of making good guacamole is just keep trying it and who doesn't love it while we're making it. I think I try it five times because I'm like, no, yes, no. Secretly, I just wanna eat guac while I'm cooking. <laughs> okay, so my husband made some really good guac and he's like, no, thinks it needs a um, little bit more lime and salt because I don't know I love salt I know someday maybe it'll catch up with me but right now I still have low blood pressure and I sweat a lot and work out so it has not caught up with me yet thank goodness doesn't that look delicious I tried it, it was good I was like yes this is the bomb my husband also wanted to show you one more thing which is how you could store your guac if you were gonna take it to a party Maybe you are gonna eat it later. Um, maybe you had some leftovers. A good thing is to put it in a container and just like he said, it's like drop it and shake it so that you get all the little air pockets out of there, okay? Because you don't want any or it will, of course, start turning brown. We all know that there is nothing worse than brown guacamole, especially if you arrive at a party, you take it as a side or whatever. And the other thing to do is not to let air into it. So he wanted to show you that you just take some saran wrap and put it right on top of your guacamole and you want to just make sure that it's like really covered 
no air in there and then shove it in and that is a good way to store it especially if you make it early like we do sometimes if you're going to make a big mexican meal and you're not going to eat it until later and then he wanted to let you know you could also put a top onto it seal it throw it into your fridge okay now we're going to get going with our chips we happen to have a small fryer it's fried out we used to have a big one but we're trying to not fry um because health reasons obviously but we once in a while pull out the fryer because nothing is better than hot chips oh my gosh my i think my daughter could just eat these every single day um and you can, and you just want to cut them into triangles uh just buy corn tortillas i do prefer the yellow corn over the white corn you can buy them both at the store but i love me a yellow corn tortilla now some people like that their chips have a little bit of lime zing to it. So if you do, this is the time to actually put on the lime before you put it into your fryer. You're just going to sprinkle it on, add some in. You just want to get a good coating onto your chips before you put it in fire. And if you don't like that flavor, then you don't need to. They uh, taste great without the lime, but if you like that little zing to your chips, Put it on before you put it in the fryer. And then he also wanted to remind you that you could also make strips because these are also delicious if you are making some kind of like, I make a great tomatillo salad, I'll have to show you guys one night. Um, and we use the strips or you're making some tortilla soup and you're like, okay, I need some strips to throw into my soup. This is another good way. There's just, they are so versatile and you can make them so beautiful on your plate. Maybe you're going to have some kind of like, I don't know, Mexican chicken meal of some sort. I don't know. And uh, you want your plate to look more beautiful, then you cut them into strips and they can get a lot of hide out of it. And on these strips too, you could just do salt. If you want to do lime, it's up to you. Okay. Our fryer top part looks like it has some use. It has. Try to clean it off. But fryers just get gross. It is what it is. So when you put them in, you want to make sure... If there's a lot of bubbles, it's really hot, and you want to leave your fire open so that the humidity just releases, you'll know when they're ready. My husband said, when the bubbles start going down. I actually didn't know that until he told me. I was like, I kind of just sit there and guess when they're ready, but Kelly, they turn. You want to immediately put them in your bowl, and you want to add some salt to it right when they're hot, because if not, the salt will not stick to your chips. Okay, and then you just want to put them into a bowl that's lined with um, paper towels to soak up all the oil. Okay, guys, I hope you love this. Please give this a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe to our channel. We will see you next week. Remember, midweek videos are for cooking. And the weekends right now we're dedicating to a lot of fitness. So I hope we see you this weekend. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. See you next week. Bye-bye.